Hello and welcome to this video. I am Karnesh Chauri and today we will look at POSIX threads. We will look at a pthreads library calls, synchronization issues and example programs. And we will do all this using the C language. The starting point is a process. A process is a context for executing programs. Processes have unique ID, address space, which comprises of code, global data, kernel data, stack, heap, etc. A process executes a program. By default, it has a single thread of execution. With threads, that is, using a library like pthreads, we can have multiple threads of execution. Each thread has its own flow of control. That is, each thread has its own CPU clock, instruction pointer, stack. Basically, a thread executes a function of the program. All threads share global data. POSIX threads, usually called pthreads, is an API defined by the standard POSIX.1C 1995. It is published by IEEE as thread extensions IEEE standard 1003.1C 1995. Before we get to pthreads API, let us look at some underlying concepts. And the first is synchronous mode of operation. Synchronous comes from syn and chronos. Syn means together and chronos means time. So synchronous means happening at the same time. In our context, it implies blocking or waiting for the current operation to complete before doing then something else. For example, a read call from a pipe or socket might block for lack of data. Next is asynchronous mode of operation. Asynchronous is important for programming. Processes and threads are asynchronous. What asynchronous means is that they are independent in operation and progress concurrently. By default, there is no dependency between them. If we plot them, they are progress on a timeline, they appear as parallel lines. It is different that as they are asynchronous, we may not like them to do something at the same time and we may try to synchronize them using a mechanism like semaphore. Concurrency is when the solution to a problem is decomposed into tasks which can execute at the same time in any order. The task can be interrupted at any time and can be reordered. The output results are always the same. The programming discipline is known as concurrent programming. In many cases, you can solve the problem faster with concurrent programming even on a uniprocessor system. For instance, a task may get blocked for input-output and other tasks may progress in the meantime. A task is a process or a thread. Parallelism is when multiple tasks can execute at the same time. This can only happen in a, on a multiprocessor system. So, if a software system is designed with concurrent tasks and runs on a computer with multiple processors, you can have parallelism in addition to concurrency. Thread safe. When we say that some code is thread safe, we mean that it can be called from multiple threads and there won't be any harmful results. It doesn't mean that the code is efficient or something. The only requirement of thread safe is safety. There are no errors resulting from the call. We can make a function thread safe by putting a mutex lock at the beginning and unlock at the end. The result is serializing the execution of the function in multiple calling threads. Or better still, we can guard the critical data instead of the whole code with a mutex. Reentrancy. When we say a function is reentrant, we mean that it is efficiently thread safe. It has been coded in such a way that it can be efficiently called from multiple threads. Reentrant functions avoid using static data. Also, any kind of synchronization between threads is to be avoided. And often, the interface is planned so that the pointers to the data to work with are provided by the caller. Now we look at the pthreads API part 1, which will get us started with pthreads. The first function is pthread create, which creates a new thread in the calling process. The first parameter is pointed to type pthread t, in which thread id is returned. The second parameter attr is a pointer to thread attributes and can be null for default attributes. 
the third parameter star routine is the function to be executed by the thread. The star routine must conform to the prototype void pointer star routine void pointer arg. It must take an argument which points to a void and must also return a pointer to a void. The last argument is a pointer to a void. This is passed as the argument to the star routine. pthread create returns zero on success and a non-zero integer in case of failure. pthread join. The pthread join function waits for the thread identified by the first parameter to terminate. If the thread has already terminated, pthread join returns immediately. The second parameter red well is a pointer to a pointer. If this is not null, the return value of the thread is copied at pointer red well. If the thread was cancelled, pthread cancelled is copied at pointer red well. Two threads cannot wait for each other to terminate and in such cases pthread join returns the error e deadlock. pthread cancel cancels the thread identified by the first parameter. pthread exit terminates the calling thread. A thread can copy its exit value in the parameter pointer red well. And red well should be a global variable before any function in the program file so that it's visible to all functions. We have seen pthread functions to create, cancel and terminate threads and also wait for some thread to terminate. We'll now look at a small example that uses these functions. In this example, the main thread of the process creates 10 threads and then waits for them to terminate. It also cancels the last thread. And this is a program threads example.c. This is the main function which is the main thread. Using pthread create we create 10 threads. Using pthread cancel we cancel the last thread tid9. Next we wait for the threads to terminate. Using pthread join we wait for the 10 threads to terminate. As threads terminate a status message is printed. ethread is the example thread function. Each thread prints a hello message and then it prints the thread id and a number. We can compile this program using the gcc command. We need to link it with the pthread library using the minus lpthread option and we run the program. Now we come to threads synchronization. Why is synchronization? I have said that threads are asynchronous. They progress concurrently but they are not 100% independent. They need to work together for the purpose of the process. More importantly, threads share the global data of their process. So, if a thread modifies data which some other thread is using in good faith, the results may be disastrous. That is why there are critical sections of programs where the variables used are guaranteed to be under control of only one thread. Threads need to be synchronized so that only one thread works in the critical section at a time. Others must be made to wait till the thread inside critical section comes out of it. How do we program a critical section? Critical sections of code need to be protected by a mechanism called mutex. Mutex is a portmanteau word derived from mutual exclusion. It is a locking mechanism. Only one thread can lock a mutex at a time and that thread needs to unlock it before any other thread can lock it. We lock a mutex at the beginning of a critical section and unlock it at the end of the critical section. The easiest way to get a mutex is to define a global variable of type pthread mutex t and initialize it with pthread mutex initializer. The call to lock a mutex is pthread mutex lock and we pass a pointer to mutex object as a parameter. Similarly, the call to unlock is pthread mutex unlock. There is a class of problems where threads share data and need to be signaled about changes in the state of data. For example, consider the producer-consumer problem. There are a fixed number of buffers for passing data between producers and consumers. Producers produce data in a buffer. Consumers take data from a buffer produced by a producer. Producers need to know when an empty buffer is available. Consumers need to know when a buffer filled with data from a producer becomes available. This problem can be solved using counting semaphores. pthreads provides an alternate solution in the form of condition variables. To solve the synchronization problem, we need a condition variable. Condition variables are used 
to signal the state of shared data between threads. We also need a mutex and we need a predicate which depends on problem being solved. For example, predicate could be buffer is available or data is available from producers. For producer, the condition variable is cbuff and predicate is buffer available. The mutex is b. The producer locks the mutex and does a conditional weight on cbuff. Note that mutex is an argument in the conditional weight. During the conditional weight, mutex is unblocked. So during the time producer is doing a conditional weight on cbuff, a consumer can lock the mutex and do a conditional signal on cbuff. As soon as the conditional weight is over for the producer, the mutex is locked again and producer can write to the buffer, do a conditional signal on debuff and unlock the mutex. Similarly, the conditional variable for consumer is debuff and predicate is data available. The consumer does a conditional weight on debuff. Once the conditional weight is over, the consumer uses the data, does a conditional signal on cbuff indicating that the buffer is available. And finally, it unlocks the mutex. Why do producer and consumer check the predicate in a while loop? Mostly there will be just one iteration of the while loop. But just in case a signal interrupts the conditional weight, it is started again by the while loop. Now we look at the pthreads function calls for condition variables. The simplest way to get a condition variable is to define it as a global variable and initialize it with pthread cont initializer. There are two basic calls pthread cont weight and pthread cont signal. Pthread cont weight takes in two parameters the pointers to condition variable and the mutex respectively. Pthread cont weight blocks on the condition variable pointed by cont. As soon as the call is made, the mutex is released. At the end of the call, the mutex is locked and is owned by the calling thread. Pthread cont signal signals the condition variable pointed by cont. And we have the example program for the producer consumer problem using pthreads and condition variables. There are 10 buffers, each buffer is of size 100 bytes. We have buffer index pointing to the next empty buffer and buffer print index pointing to the next buffer to be printed by the consumer thread. We have a mutex, buff mutex and, and two condition variables, buff cond and spool cond. Then there are two predicates, buffer available and lines to print. We initialize the buffer index and buffer print index. The consumer thread is called spooler. We create the spooler and next we create 10 producer threads. Now let us look at the producer code. A producer locks the mutex and does a conditional weight on buff cond to acquire a buffer. Once it gets a buffer, it updates the buffer index and writes the string to the acquired buffer. Next, it does a conditional signal on spool cond for the consumer. Finally, it unlocks the mutex. Next, uh, there is a consumer thread which is called the spooler. It locks mutex, does a conditional weight on spool cond and that is over when it gets a string to print. It updates the buffer print index, increments buffer available and does a conditional signal on buff cond indicating one buffer is now free for use by producers and it repeats this forever. We can compile and run the program gccpthreads-sync.c-opthreads-sync-lpthread and we can run the program. With this, we come to the end of this video. You can find all this information at http colon double slash bit dot ly slash pos6 hyphen threads. Thanks very much for watching. Have a good day.